Chasing Dirt presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. If you got Miss Bowen to come here to make trouble, Clara... I didn't, Larry, I swear it. Oh, maybe that's the mysterious woman who called me. I'll get it. Why, Mr. Carter? Why, Nick? Don't tell us you got a phone call, too. Certainly did. A call to come over here in a hurry to prevent a murder. Murder? But I'm the one who's been threatened, and I certainly didn't call you. Well, somebody did. Listen, that's the kitchen door. Somebody... <laughs> And now, the case of the substitute slayer. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's mid-morning as an overly dressed woman in her middle 30s sits stiffly in Nick Carter's office. I suppose you've heard of me, Mr. Carter. I'm Clara Corbin. Uh, Miss Corbin's a writer, Nick. She writes soap operas for the radio. You know, serials. Thrilling real-life drama. The solutions to the problems that confront every woman. Oh, I see. But uh, doesn't it get a little tiresome, Miss Corbin? Oh, heavens no. Well, what can I do for you? Mr. Carter, the plot of one of my shows is actually happening in real life. Really? Here, read this note. Clara Corbin, if you don't stop writing about Larry and me, I'll kill you. You got this note through the mail? Yes, and here's another one. Clara Corbin, take me out of your script if you want to keep on writing. Sounds like the work of a crank if you ask me. Mr. Carter, I don't suppose you've ever heard my radio serial, My Sister's Husband. Why, no, I haven't. Well, I don't dare let this out publicly. But my serial, My Sister's Husband, is based on the real lives of real people. Even so, I don't see how... You will. My younger sister's married to Larry Harris, a reasonably successful man. They're a typical middle-class couple. Oh, then the reference in one of those notes to Larry... It refers to Larry Harris, of course. Uh Uh-huh. But where do I come in? Well... Everything that happens to Sue and Larry goes into the show. If they have a misunderstanding, the characters in the show have a misunderstanding. But actually, Sue and Larry lead rather prosaic lives, and the serial needs conflict and excitement, so I have to make up some of the plot myself. I see. Go on. Right now, the show is getting its excitement from a triangle. There's another woman. But this triangle in your serial isn't based on actual facts, is it? Well, I didn't think so when I began writing the present series of episodes, Mr. Carter... But I'm not so sure anymore. Then you think the other woman in a real-life triangle is sending you the threatening notes? I don't know what else to think. Well, Miss Corbin, is there really any mix-up in your sister's marriage? Why, if I'd even suspected any such thing, I wouldn't have dreamed of using it in my show. Of course not. But if there is another woman, and she's responsible for the threatening notes I've been getting... Oh, I'm afraid, Mr. Carter... She hates me, and she intends to kill me. Well, uh, couldn't you stop writing this particular plot? Oh, no. The plot's been approved by the sponsor, and the scripts are in for three weeks in advance. I can't do a thing about it. But I don't want to be murdered, Mr. Carter. You've got to help me. No, 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 Miss Corbin. Those notes may be the work of a practical joker or a crank. Hardly seems probable that you'd hit on a true story by accident. Oh, I'm not so sure it was an accident. Larry is... Well, well, I don't trust him. He's been fickle before. Oh, Mr. Carter, please, will you take my case? But I don't know that there is any case, Miss Corbin. I don't even know if there actually is another woman. But there must be. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult to find out. Yes, yes, but how? Well, the simplest way is to ask your brother-in-law, Larry Harris. You, you mean you'd go to see him? Why not? He may even thank me for tipping him off that there may be trouble brewing. Oh, no, he'd be furious with me. He'd say I was meddling again. Now, don't worry, Miss Corbin. I'll do my best to protect you when I talk to oh, you. Oh, but, Mr. Besides, Carter... Besides, if I were in your place, I'd rather have a brother-in-law sore at me than have a threat of murder hanging over my head. Now, Carter, what the devil is all this about? Mr. Harris, it's about some notes that contain threats of murder. Threats of murder? Yes. Do you have any idea who might send a note like this to Clara Corbin? Oh, let's see. Clara Corbin, leave Larry, Larry and me out of your cereal or I'll kill you. Is this another one of Clara's little tricks? I don't think so, Mr. Harris. Why would she hire me if it were? You don't know Clara very well. I take it you don't like your sister-in-law. That's a real understatement. 
How would you like it if your whole private life was paraded in public? No better than you do, Mr. Harris, but I don't like murder either. Murder? This isn't murder. This is... Well, it's... Yes, it's, what is it? Why, why, it's a joke of some kind. Murder's not a good subject for jokes. It is with Clara Corbin, and it couldn't happen to a nicer person. Look, Mr. Harris, I'm going to be frank with you. If there is another woman in your life besides your wife, these letters may get you into a lot of trouble. That wouldn't worry Clara. But it should worry you. Now, I'm not interested in your personal affairs. But is there another woman? Certainly not. I threatened to sue Clara for liable once, and if she keeps this up, I'll do it. But if you aren't involved with another woman, then her story hardly applies to you, does it? That doesn't make any difference. Whether it applies to me or not, it, it can still hurt me plenty. But how? Outsiders don't know that the story is based on your life. But, Mr. Carter, I think I've given you quite enough of my time. You might as well go back to your office and charge this interview up to wasted time. All right, Mr. Harris, I'll go back to my office. But I won't admit I've wasted any time. Not yet. So her sister's husband wouldn't tell you a thing, huh, Nick? Oh, I wouldn't say that, Patsy. Hmm? He thinks he didn't tell me anything, but he did give me some helpful information. For instance? Well, for one thing, he's nursing a violent hatred for Clara Corbin. Oh, I could have guessed that. For another thing, there is another woman in his life. What? Well, and he admitted it? No, he denied it, but when I suggested that he didn't have any cause for libel if it weren't true, he got sore at me. Practically told me to get out of his office. Okay, but do you think he tried to get Miss Corbin to change her plot by sending her those notes? No, Patsy. He seemed genuinely surprised when I showed him one of those notes. Hmm. Well, I keep going back to the idea that maybe Clara Corbin sent those notes to herself. But why? Well, she hears that her brother-in-law is stepping out on Sister Sue. She wants to stop it, so she puts that kind of a plot into a radio serial. Figuring it would scare Larry Harris into behaving himself? Exactly. Only it didn't, so she went a step further. And you think those murder notes are fakes, Why, huh? sure. No, no, I, I think you're wrong, Patsy. What? It's quite possible that this mysterious other woman does exist. And I want to find out who she is. Well, say, say, Nick, we're overlooking one person who may know who this other woman is. Sue Harris, his wife. Well, that's possible, Nick, but... perhaps she didn't want to risk breaking up her home by making a scene. So, instead of accusing her husband, she may have talked Clara into writing this stuff. But Patsy, she wouldn't admit that. Oh, Nick, I have a hunch I could get her to talk. At least, why don't you let me try? Okay, go ahead. Good. But don't be disappointed if your hunch turns out to be a flop. <laughs> I'm... Oh, are you the woman who called herself Miss Bowen and claimed to be working for a detective? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I'm Patsy Bowen. And if you're Miss Harris... My husband was furious when I told him I'd agree to talk to you. He said it was a trick. A trick? Well, I don't see how. Larry says the newspapers have been after him about the plot in my sister's husband, well, trying to get him to involve himself and me in a scandal. And if some newspaper sent you... Oh, here, Miss find... Harris, I assure you I'm not from any newspaper. Well, if you are, you can tell your editor that the triangle plot in my sister's radio show is completely without foundation as far as Larry and I are concerned. Please, Mrs. Harris, I'm not from a newspaper, believe me. You, your sister knows about my appointment with you. You can call her if you don't believe me. I'll just take you up on that, young lady. Come in. <laughs> Thanks. And if she doesn't back you up, I'm going to call the police. Larry told me not to let you get away with anything. And I'm... Oh, somebody else is at the door. Wait a minute. Of course, Mrs. Harris. Why, Clara. Hi, Sue. I just dropped in to see whether I could do anything that might help Miss Bowen. Well, then you know this woman, Clara? Why, of course. You see? You mean you actually hired a detective to pry into our private lives? Oh, now, darling, that's hardly the way I've to... stood all I can, Clara. You've tried to make a mess of my married life right from the start. But, oh, uh, dear, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do. And you've gone too far this time. Now get out of this house and never come back. I never want to see you again. Oh, dear, you're upset. You bet I'm upset. Sue, I went to a detective because I don't want to be murdered. Murdered? That's right. Oh, boy, I think you're both crazy. I suppose you think it's crazy that Larry... Stop it. I won't have you say anything about Larry. No? Then I suppose he isn't in love with somebody else. He was never in love with you, Clara. That's certain. Uh, Mrs. Harris. I told you time and time again that I was glad we found out in time that Larry and I were... You were so jealous of me that it drove you crazy when Larry married me. And you've never given up trying. Sue, so you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. You started that radio program just for spite. 
to try to break up our home. But I'm trying to save it. Please, no. I haven't asked you for any help, Clara. Get out. Sue. Sue, somebody came in the side door without knocking. Who is? Well, Larry, what? What brings you home in the middle of the afternoon? Some woman called me. Said I should get home right away, that it was a matter of life and death. She scared me half out of my wits. Well, it must have been this woman here who called you. Well, Mrs. Harris, I don't know a thing about it. Well, then, whoever you are, what are you doing here? Well, I... If Clara brought you here to make trouble... I haven't, Larry, I swear. That it. doesn't impress me much, Clara. Well, I suppose... It... Maybe that's the woman who called you. Well, I'll go see who it is right away. Why, Nick, Mr. Carter, what? What's going on here, anyway? Well, don't tell us you got a phone call, too. Certainly did. Some woman said I'd have to hurry if I wanted to prevent a murder. Murder? But I'm the one who's been threatened, and I certainly didn't call you. Well, somebody called me. Shh, listen. Somebody just opened the kitchen door. Somebody must have come in without knocking. But who would... Come in? <laughs> oh, good. Come on, on in the kitchen. Hurry. Oh, great Scott. What? Connie Barton. Is, is she dead? I'll tell you in a minute. Mrs. Harris, who's Connie Barton? Why, she's... She's Larry's secretary. Larry, how in the world did I she... I don't know get... anything about it, Sue. Oh, Mr. Carter, is she... Yes, she's dead. Oh, dear. What's more, I'm afraid the murderers had time to get away. See anybody? No. The murderer must have figured we'd be stopped a few seconds when we saw the body. Oh, but... The murder? How did you know it was... From the scratch on her face, I'd say she died from a hypo-injection of some quick-acting poison. And I don't want anybody to leave this room. Oh, really, now? The police will want to find the hypodermic needle. And I don't intend to give anyone here a chance to get rid of it. Oh, but none of us could have killed her. We were all in the living room. Mrs. Harris, did you know this... Connie Barton. Why, yes. Not well, oh, but... Oh, of you... course, soon you were. Connie Barton was my private secretary. That's one way of putting it. Now, see here, Clara, if you think There's that you... There's can... no use trying to bluff me. Clara, I've stood all I'm going to. You want the truth, don't you, Mr. Carter? I do. Well... Connie Barton was the other woman in my radio show. The kitchen door of the Harris house opened. There was a scream, and then the door was closed. The number one question now in Nick Carter's mind is, who killed Connie Barton? In just a moment, we'll see what happens next. Now, back to The Case of the Substitute Slayer. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's now some time later. The scene is Larry Harris's private office. And Nick Carter has just come in. Larry, none too enthusiastic, says... What do you want now, Carter? I want to discuss your secretary's murder, Mr. Harris. Well, there's not much I can tell you, is there? That all depends. The police found the hypodermic needle in the yard. Thanks to you, none of us had a chance to get out of the house after the murder was committed. I know. But whoever the murderer was, it isn't healthy to have him or her running around loose. Murder's the kind of an idea that grows in a person. Just the same, Connie must have been killed because of something entirely outside the office. Then why was your home picked as the place for it to happen? Well, that's easy, because there'd been gossip about Connie and me. Was there any foundation for that gossip, Mr. Harris? I've told you there wasn't. Thanks to that telephone tip, I was lucky enough to be in the clear. Mm-hmm. Any idea who called you? No. Mr. Harris, was Connie Barton the other woman in your life? No. There was nothing between Connie and me. You think it was Connie who threatened your sister-in-law's life? I've been wondering. Was she angry about the plot and my sister's husband? How could she help but be? I suppose she discussed it with you. Yes. Well, she was in a spot. She didn't dare bring any legal action against Clara because that would dignify the whole mess. She wanted to quit her job on account of it. I wouldn't let her. Nick and Mr. Carter, we... Betsy, what brings you and Miss Corbin here? I told you... I know, Nick, but I had to close up the office. Miss Corbin came to see you and you weren't there, so we rushed up to Mary Manning's apartment. Just a minute. Hmm? That's a new name. Who's Mary Manning? She's the radio actress who was playing the part of the other woman in my serial. When I listened this afternoon, there was a new girl in the part, and I wondered what had happened. So I called the producer, and he said that Mary Manning didn't show up for rehearsal, and he hadn't been able to get her on the phone. So Miss Corbin and I took a cab to her apartment, and... Well, she's gone. She's packed up and cleared out. It looks as though she's run away. Miss Corbin, can I listen to a record of this Mary Manning's voice? Why, I suppose the studio has recordings, but why? I want to see whether I recognize the voice. Whether she was the woman who sent me to the scene of the murder. Mr. Carter, 
You insist you recognize Mary Manning's voice from the record at the studio. And Mary said the same thing before we left him, but... There's not I... the slightest doubt of it, Miss Corbin. Well, Why was Mary Manning playing the particular role you gave her? I? You think I cast the shows? Why, I had nothing to do with it. The producer... Uh, I talked to the producer, Nick, and Mr. Weller. He backs Miss Corbin up on that. All right, then. What do you know about Mary Manning? Why, nothing. I've seen her around the studios, that's all. Did you find out anything about her, Patsy, when you talked to the radio producer? Practically nothing. I don't suppose Mr. Weller knew whether Miss Manning knew Larry or Sue Harris. No, no, I asked just to be sure, but he didn't. I still think there must have been some reason why she was picked to play the role of the other woman in that serial. Only because the producer evidently thought that she was capable of doing a good job. And she was. Miss Corbin, I think I'll go have a little talk with the producer of your show. Oh, Mr. Carter, my living depends on getting along with radio producers, and I won't have you making any more trouble. I'm not trying to make trouble for you, Miss Corbin, but at the moment I'm trying to run down a murderer, and I'd like to do it before anybody else gets killed. You and Patsy wait here for me. Right, Nick. Well, of all the... I won't have it. He's not going to jeopardize my show. Well, now, look, Miss Corbin. Let me get at that phone. Uh, oh, Miss Corbin, if you're going to call the it's producer... It's none of your business whom I call. Well, just this minute. Miss Bowen, I told you that... Hello? What? Oh, give me Mr. Weller's office right away. Yes, and please hurry. I've got an idea, Miss Corbin. Oh, uh, hello, Sarah. Yes, yes, this is Miss Corbin. Now, look. A detective's on his way to the studio to talk to Mr. Weller. Well, he'll ask all kinds of questions and tell him anything you want to, but don't let him see Mr. Weller. Now, look here. If you do, Sarah, it will cost you your job. Well, Goodbye. Miss Corbin, you killed Connie Barton. I killed? Don't you even dare say such a thing. But you did, and you're also afraid to let Nick find out how Mary Manning got into the cast of your show. That's a lie. Oh, no, it's not. She was working with you. And I'm going to phone the producer of your show right now. You're not going to keep Nick from talking to him. You, you, you put down that phone. I will not. You put it down. Oh, oh so you want to fight, do you? Well, ouch. Why, drop you... that phone. Drop it, you. All are... right, I'll drop it right on your head. <gasps> oh. Okay, Miss Corbin. I hated to knock you out, but you had it coming. Now maybe I can make my phone call without any interruption. Hello, Mrs. Harris. Why, Mr. Carter. What brings you back here? Have you found out anything about the murder? I'm not sure. Is your husband at home? No, he isn't. Well, maybe it's better he isn't here now. I want to talk to you about Connie Barton. Very well. I'll start out by telling you I'm glad she's dead. Oh? Every word that Clara put in the radio serial of hers was true. You're sure Yes, that... and everybody knew it. Connie Barton deserved to die. I see. Well, Mrs. Harris, it so happened that she died in your kitchen. And in view of what you've just said, you had a stronger motive for killing her than anybody else. But I couldn't have killed her. I was right here with the rest of you when the kitchen door opened when you heard that scream. Mary Manning wasn't here in this room, Mrs. Harris. Mary Manning? Don't tell me you don't know who Mary Manning is. But I don't. I've never heard the name. Who is she? You know, I believe you're telling the truth. Well, of course I am. Who is she? She's the person who's going to catch the killer. What? Larry. Carter. What the devil are you doing here? Asking your wife a few questions, Harris. What brings you home at this time of the day? Why, I, I have to go out of town for a few days on business. It's a hurry-up trip. You think it's wise for you to leave before this murder is solved? That murder doesn't concern me. Somebody at the door, Larry. Okay, I'll get it. Larry. Oh, hey, you think what's happened to you? Miss Bowen tried to kill me so that I couldn't leave this man's office. Miss Corbin, you... But I pretended to be unconscious until I saw my chance to get away from her. Then I got a cab. You didn't get away from her, Miss Corbin. She's getting out of another cab at the curb right now. But why should she try to keep Clara in your office, Carter? Great Scott. Does she think Clara is the killer? Oh, oh Nick. Nick, she tried to get away after I discovered she was the killer. Hold on, I... Patsy. Hold on. Are you sure Miss Corbin's the killer? That girl's mad. Miss Corbin, I want to know one thing. How did you happen to arrive here just before the murder? Why, I... I got a telephone call from the woman who'd been giving me all the information I'd been using about, about Larry and Connie Barton. Go on. She said there was going to be a showdown here. You, you mean Mary Manning called you too? No, no, it wasn't Mary Manning. I know her voice, but... I know. It was Connie Barton who called you, wasn't it? Connie Barton? I, I think so, yes. Yes, I'm sure it was Connie. It was Connie Barton who gave you all the information you used in your radio serial. But I... She was the one person who stood to profit from the breakup of the Harris home. She wanted you to divorce your wife and marry her, didn't she, Harris? Well, that's hard to believe, but 
If what Clara says is true... You know very well it's true. But this Mary Manning, why should she have killed Connie? Why... We won't know what part Mary Manning played in this till we find her. I'll get it. No, no, I've been expecting a call. Hey, give me the phone. Okay, but... Hello? Nick Carter speaking. Oh, yes, Maddie. What? Mary Manning? She has wonderful. Has she talked yet, Maddie? She has, huh? Fine. I don't blame her for asking to be placed in protective custody. No, no, I won't need any help, Maddie. Thanks. Goodbye. You'll need a lot of help, Carter. Nick, he's got a gun. I'm afraid I'll have to use it too, Miss Bowen. I don't intend to be arrested. Larry Harris holds the revolver to Nick Carter's head as he removes Nick's gun from its holster. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Substitute Slayer, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. As Larry Harris takes Nick Carter's gun, he says, No, Carter, I don't intend to wind up behind bars. And you're not going to tell anybody your ideas about what happened either. Look, Harris, if you love your wife, you won't run away. It's my money he loves. That's he never loved right, me. That's right, darling. You never let me forget it. Okay, Carter. Larry, don't. For my sake, you mustn't kill anyone else. You mustn't. Sue, get away from me. Stop. Don't put your arms around me. Can't you see? Come on, Harris, drop those guns. I, you I told you to drop those you. guns. If you don't, I'll break your neck. Carter, I'll... Okay, if that's the way you want it. There. Now, if you want some more... Look out, Nicky. Don't reach for that other gun, Harris. I've got you covered. And it would be a pleasure to shoot. Okay. Okay, you win. But you'll never be able to prove a thing against me. You don't even know what really happened. I know enough. I know for one thing that your secretary was trying to force you to divorce your wife and marry her. The whole mess was her fault. You mean that Connie Barton sent me those threatening notes? Yes. She wanted to stir things up. That still doesn't prove I killed Connie. The proof you killed her, Harris, is the positive identification of the druggist who sold you the poison she was killed with. That's a lie. I got it from a doctor, and even he doesn't know that I... Oh. So you stole it from a doctor, huh? Thanks, Harris. All right. Yes, I stole it from a doctor. You win again. I suppose you also told the actress, Mary Manning, that you wanted her as a witness in a scheme to sue Clara Corbin. No. I told her Clara was framing a little scene at my house as a publicity gag for the show. Did she come here to the house with you and your secretary? Yes. But I had her call you first. Then the three of us, Connie, Mary Manning, and I, all drove out here together. Didn't Connie Barton suspect anything? Sure. But I told her we wanted an outside witness. But when did you kill Connie? While Miss Bowen was ringing the doorbell, I told Connie she was to hide in the kitchen until everybody was here. Then I sneaked her in to show her where to hide, and, well, it was quiet and simple. I don't suppose she ever knew what happened to her. No. Then I tiptoed out and told Mary Manning she wasn't to come into the kitchen to listen until after everybody had arrived. It was a cute trick. You thought we'd catch her when we discovered the body and screamed that she'd take the rap for Connie's murder. Yes. If you didn't catch her, I was in the clear. And if you did, nothing she could have said would have helped her much. I would have insisted I didn't know her. It was just my bad luck she got to the police before I found her. Suppose you planned to kill her, too. Of course, I had to. But now that she's told the police all she knows... But I... she hasn't, Mr. Harris. What? Well, I... that, that phone call... That call was for your wife. And the magazine salesman who called her must think I'm crazy. Who are you? I had to know who would be afraid to have Mary Manning found. So I fall for a trick like that. I even fall for it when my wife throws her arms around me so that you can grab the guns. Uh, but, Mrs. Harris, did you do that deliberately so that Nick could stop your husband? I, um... Don't answer that question, Mrs. Harris. I'd rather not know. But thanks, just the same. <laughs> Nick, before we leave, what about next week's adventure? Well, Mike, it came as close to being the perfect crime as any I've seen. You see, Mike, the only person who could prove there'd been a murder was the corpse. But surely Nick found some kind of a clue. Only one. A peroxide cutie with naturally blonde hair. But if she was a peroxide blonde, she couldn't be a natural blonde, too. She was, though, Mike. Huh? And it was a good thing. Because trying to explain that fact was the only way to solve the murder. Well, what do you call the adventure, Nick? I call it the case of the unwanted wife. <laughs> Carter, Master Detective, 
is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by George B. Anderson. Original music is played by Henry Silburn. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>